Former U.S. President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to dozens of criminal counts for mishandling some of the U.S. government's most sensitive secretive uh, secrets, that is, and preventing their return. Trump's plea entered before the U.S. magistrate judge, Jonathan Goodman, and set up a legal battle likely to play out over the coming months. It marks the U.S. ex-president's most serious legal threat yet, as a firestorm of criminal investigations imperil his bid for a second White House term. Donald Trump is facing 37 felony charges related to the mishandling of classified documents. The prosecutors have accused the former president of endangering national security by holding on to top secret nuclear and defense documents after leaving the White House. The 49 page charge sheet says Trump took hundreds of classified government documents and cardboard boxes to his Mar-a-Lago residence in Florida. The indictment states that Trump kept the files, which included records from the Pentagon, CIA, and the National Security Agency, unsecured at Mar-a-Lago, which hosted large events. On at least two occasions, Trump showed classified papers on U.S. military operations. Trump's personal aide, Walt Nauta, named as co-conspirator, has been charged with six counts for helping him hide the documents. As per the indictment, the documents were kept at various locations in Mar-a-Lago, including a ballroom, a bathroom, Trump's bedroom, and a storage room. The former president was allowed to leave the court without a condition or travel restrictions, and no cash bond was required. Goodman ruled that Trump was not allowed to communicate with potential witnesses in the case. Trump's aide, Walt Nauta, uh, who is still awaiting counsel, will be back in court later this month. I had every right to have these documents. The president enjoys unconstrained authority to make decisions regarding the disposal of documents. That's unconstrained to make that decision. Joe Biden had troves of classified documents from his time as vice president and even as a senator, which was completely and totally illegal. In fact, other senators heard about it. Trump faces charges that include a violation of the Espionage Act, which criminalizes unauthorized possession of defense information and conspiracy to obstruct justice. He would serve a maximum of 20 years in prison if convicted, at least for one of those charges. Trump's legal woes have not hurt his standing with Republican voters. A recent Reuters Ipsos poll showed that Trump is still leading rivals for the Republican nomination, and 81 percent of Republican voters view the charges as being motivated. Most of Trump's Republican presidential rivals have lined up behind him and accused the FBI of political bias. It marks a sharp turn from the party's traditional support for law enforcement, some say. Vivek Ramaswamy, one of the presidential candidates, said outside the Miami courthouse that he would pardon Trump if elected president in 2024. Experts say the complexities of handling classified evidence and legal maneuvering by Trump's lawyers could delay a trial by more than a year. His defense team is in flux after two lawyers quit the case on Friday. In the meantime, Trump is free to campaign for presidency and could take office even if he were found guilty. Okay, for more on this, we are being joined by Professor Stephen Fish from Berkeley in the United States. He is a professor of political science at the University of of California. Thank you so much for joining us on We On, Professor. Uh, so let's talk about this two-tier justice situation that the Republicans talk about. After all, we do know that U.S. President Joe Biden uh, also had classified documents next to his Corvette in his garage, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, and then Hillary Clinton, and even Barack Obama as well. Uh, however, the Justice Department says this is different. This is di very different. The classified documents he has are, some of them actually relate to the most sensitive matters of national security, including apparently nuclear secrets. And the way Trump has handled it is to try to obstruct an investigation into this. Biden it basically in, you know, invited, uh, invited legal authorities to take a look at the matter and didn't do anything to try to obstruct them. Trump has actually tried to obstruct this investigation all along. And it's for that for those reasons it's really a very different matter.
And moving forward, what do you anticipate happening with this case? I mean, it's definitely right now a campaign issue. It is politicized just because he is the Republican frontrunner for 2024. Is this going to continue all the way into the time that he's campaigning, President Joe Biden possibly being the Democrat nominee campaigning, and even maybe after the U.S. presidential elections? It's possible that it will. It's remarkable, though, that the Democrats, for the most part, really don't try to politicize these legal cases against Trump. They tend to want to leave it to the lawyers and leave it to the courts. It's also clear that that Trump's party, for the most part, is going to rally behind him in this. A lot of his supporters, I would say at least half of of the Republican Party, is are going to come out and vote for Trump no matter what. If these if he's actually giving nuclear secrets to Kim Jong Un and to Vladimir Putin, they would still come out and vote for him. That's the kind of core of his base. That said, I think in a general election with President Biden, this this indictment, and indeed if Trump is guilty of of what he's charged of, could hurt him in the general election against Biden. It probably won't prevent him from getting the nomination, though it could actually remind uh, Republican voters that he would go into the election against Biden with a big liability and therefore be less electable in the general election. And we do know that President Biden is facing his own legal problems uh, at the moment as well. It'll be interesting to watch how all of this plays out. Professor, thank you so much for joining us on We On. My pleasure.